Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Alan Ash Photography. I know it's an absolute miracle, but finally since about March, we do have some clear skies tonight. And if I kind of sound a little bit, you know, under the weather, it's allergies. We are looking at extremely high pollen counts today, and I definitely have been feeling it because of all the rain that we've seen over the winter months and the spring in itself. These trees are just going off like crazy. I mean, the pollen count is absolutely maxed out today, but finally, we do have some clear skies to do some astrophotography imaging, and we're going after a galaxy, but not just a certain kind of galaxy, a whole bunch of galaxies. We're going to be focusing on something known as the Coma Cluster inside of Coma Berenices, which houses hundreds, if not thousands, of galaxies in itself, all in one small area. It is an Abel catalog as well. I just, just forget the name of it. I think it's like 1656 or something along those lines, but I've never shot this object before. It is a bit on the windier side. The winds have been very strong today. 40 and 50 miles an hour but they are expected to calm down once we get towards nightfall finally as we have this really strong storm system moving in through Canada right now and we're just seeing the backside of things but we are going to be hoping tonight that the winds finally do calm down so we can get some astrophotography in finally after about a month or so even just coming back from Texas. All right, we got a telescope out here and now the winds have calmed down, thank goodness. We're about an hour or so away from having total darkness, so we're gonna wait until then. I'm also gonna set up the Sea Star as well, just to kind of mess around, because I'm gonna try and get Centaurus A, even though that's about 10 degrees at the highest here in my latitude, but something that I know this rig won't do, but be a little fun to see as well so let's get ready for nightfall and go ahead and start with the polar alignment process now of course with galaxy season underway i will be using the highest focal length that i have available to me and that is the explorer scientific 102 millimeter triplet refractor and i am going to be using the full focal length for this at 714 millimeters and of course it's going to be on top of the ZWO AM5 mounts with the peer extension because this telescope is quite long for a refractor. And of course the only cool camera that I have and my only one I have is the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And inside of the filter wheel here I'm going to be using the Optolong L Quad Enhance broadband filter because this is a broadband target. And it's almost first quarter now, I know, it seems like time has just passed right on and it's already first quarter again. And guiding tonight, I'm going to be using my planetary camera, the ZWO ASI 174mm, SV Bonnie 60mm guide scope, and to control everything, the ZWO ASI Air Plus, the 256 gig version. And this is what we are going to be targeting tonight for the Coma Cluster.
So I went ahead and stacked the data and we got about 8 hours worth on the coma cluster itself. So this is straight out of the stack here. And there is so many galaxies in the center of here. I mean, each one of these that kind of look like stars, these are galaxies. There is hundreds, if not over a thousand galaxies listed in this region here. We have a little bit of some gradients there on the side. No surprise because we are dealing with the first quarter moon. So that is the first thing we are going to be tackling with that. And of course, there is multiple ways to do a little bit of like some background extraction you can either use Graxpert you can use dynamic background extraction or if you have the newer versions of Pixinsight they have the new gradient removal tool I kind of mix it between a little bit between uh, DBE and Graxpert so we're gonna go with DBE on this one here I'm gonna set my tolerance to 2 shadow relaxation a six and a smoothing factor of 0 0.6 could do a sample generation 98 pixels and we're going to do 10 samples per row I'm gonna move these a little bit too so it's not including any of the, uh, the galaxies in itself Gonna go down to target image correction, subtraction, normalize, disregard background model, and replace target. There we go. Still have a little bit of some gradient around the outside here. I might have to run a little bit of that gradient reduction tool that Pixinsight has. Once I find it, a gradient correction. I just use a simplify model because I'm not too familiar with this tool as of yet. I haven't really used it too much. Didn't really notice a difference at all. So if those two do not work, we're gonna give Graxpert a try. It looks like Graxpert did the best with this so far. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of some Blur Exterminator. Help with our stars. I usually like to run two rounds of that. The correct only, so I can get those nice round stars. And then I run it again with the default settings to do some stellar sharpening. Alright, now that we have run our Blur Exterminator, let's go ahead and do some color calibration here with SPCC. I'm gonna go ahead and find the filter that I use, the Optolong L Quad Enhance. Do that for the R, G, and B. Run that over. And there we go, we have removed the stars. And it looks like it took some of the galaxies with it, unfortunately, but that's to be expected for, you know, how many galaxies are in this and sometimes star exterminator will actually mistake some of these as galaxy cores in itself but we're gonna work with what we got here so let's go ahead and do a little bit of a uh, range mask over the areas of the galaxies Add a little bit of some blur to it. I'm actually gonna rename this one Star so it's not in the way. Let's go ahead and put it over top of our image and hide the mask. And go over to Curves Transformation. We're just gonna add a little bit of some saturation to these stars. I mean these galaxies in itself. Let's see, there's not a tremendous amount of color in this galaxy uh, cluster here. It's not like we're shooting like the Leo triplet or something along those lines. I am going to brighten up those cores a little bit so they stand out. There we go. I also want to work on a little bit of the background, trying to bring it down so it's a little bit darker 
So I'm going to take what I used from the range mass and I'm going to invert it. Bring it along there. Darken up the background a little bit. Something like that. Looks pretty good. Get rid of our mask because we don't need that anymore. I renamed the Starless. We do a little bit of some noise exterminator over the whole image. So we can get rid of some of that color noise in the background. There we go. And I'm going to use Utilities Advanced Sharpening to do some sharpening of the overall galaxies itself. There we go. Looking pretty good. We're going to work on our stars image. So we can get out a lot of that green in the background. So I'm going to be running a little bit of some SCNR, but I'm also going to make a star mask while I'm doing this. Because some of the galaxies did bleed through on the star's image, so I got to make sure they are protected. There we are. Copy that over, hide it in the background, and we're going to do some SCNR. Both for that. Invert the image. Invert this mask. So get any sort of green in the background itself. There we go. Don't need that anymore. It's back. Add a little bit of some curves transformation, add some saturation to these stars. All right, now let's see what happens when we combine the stars with our starless image. So I do have a little bit of a Pixinsight script that I like to use and I have it saved here on the side. That is called Recombine Stars. Create a new image. And there we go. Quick and dirty method for this. You can see there is a ton of galaxies in this cluster here all over the place stretching all the way from the edges you can see small galaxies all the way towards the corners there's galaxies inside of galaxies you got galaxies way over here too so there's a lot that is going on in here. So it's kind of like the Markian's train, like uh, Markian's chain, but this is a lot more compact and there's a heck of a lot more stars involved with this too. We'll do a little bit of some final touch-ups here. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of some uh, star reduction because some of these uh, brighter stars here are a little bit bigger than I like to see. So I'm going to do that in itself. So I'm going to go over to the star reduction and it should pop up a new window here. And the nice part is I can see a live preview of everything so I can adjust how strong I want these. So I'm going to do it as like moderate. I can also protect the smaller stars so they're not completely irrelevant anymore. So something like that. That looks pretty good. So 
There's your new stars. This is what stars reduced. Do some final touches with the histogram. Get it to where I like it. Probably brighten it up a little bit. I won't go too too hard on it. Looks pretty good right there. So this is our final image here. I mean, there's not really much you can do as far as, you know, processing when you're doing like super clusters like this because there's not a whole lot of color involved with some of these here, but there's just I just wanted to do something like this. I never done like a super cluster like this with a uh, Abel Galaxy cluster. So, something different, nice and quick, one night. And, you know, it's been a while since I've been able to actually image since it has been terrible weather-wise. I've been away in Texas. So, it was just really nice to be able to image once again. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any other suggestions on videos you like me do, please let me know. And as always, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video.